linge banjo Ano minuselo linge banjo tine Anika judo linge banjo Tuna manyo wendo mageno sana Atwecho loko paro Toti bini sanda ni chiti nyepo Anangeyo jawaya ni nyiri malando to nyidunde chuwero Onge di chuma bere los marikendi Onge wui mabere los marikendi Anakoni ni pinyiratja bere dimos Ani kongomba spinya mama dimos My name is Javan Onyango Otieno uh, popularly known as Javan Makajudo and I come from Koloa, Kanokoloa. Uh, we originated from Nyakach Kasai and there in Kanokoloa I come from a small village known as Kasai. Uh, I'm a son to Judith Anyango Otieno and Joseph Otieno Apol. I'm a grandson to Jacob Apol and uh, I was born in a polygamous family and in our house, my mom being the Mikai, in quotes, we say in Luo Mikai, and um, I've got two sisters, me being the only son to my mother. Right now, I'm 26 years old. I was born in 1996, January 3rd. Yes, so that's all about me. I started music in the year 2016, but before the year 2016, I was growing up with that passion of music in me. I used to model some, I used to make some models of pianos and guitars, you know. Uh, and uh, I used to be a pianist in charge from the year 2000 and the year 2012 and I used to fellowship with the people of repentance and holiness ministry me being a pianist and a vocalist at the same time so uh, in the year 2016 I was out of repentance and holiness so I used to hustle in some other churches playing keyboard just to find life for myself and also to support my family back at home so one day I was just walking in a harrow, just roaming around, taking an evening walk. And uh, I happened to meet a guy by the name Sheriff Gerald Otieno, who by then was managing an artist by the name Vinnie Camella. Since I went my high school, I went to Withrow Boys and Sheriff happened to be my school buser. And now, when I started facing life again, I met Gerald when he was now managing an artist by the name Vinnie Camella. And he told me I'm managing an artist. And since in school I used to see you playing piano in church, we lack a pianist, we lack a keyboardist. Can you please come and assist us? There is money. Of course, you won't do it for free. You'll be paid. So since me, too, me as well, I was hustling, I was looking for life, I was trying to find something for myself, I gave in and I was taken to a club where Vinny was performing. I started playing piano and upon touching the keyboard, Vinny Camella happened to love my touch. And um, I, started, I started working with him as the main pianist. We worked with him despite the challenges we were facing, but we really worked nicely until the year 2017 towards August, Wood Phoebe had a concert in Ahero, a place known as Embassy Lounge. So it happened that I joined that concert because I went there to help Vinny in keyboard because uh, <clears throat> he never had some good pianist, so I had I had to go 
and help him. And um, I had a small studio which I was running in Ahero. Uh, that studio I started it with the help of some of my friends. And the studio was known as Velox Records. So under Velox Records, I was working there during the day, at night, I'm in the club playing music with Vinny. So I went to attend Wood Phoebe's concert where Vinny Camilla was the curtain raiser. So after the event, Wood Phoebe was having a short break and uh, I went there and I, 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 I got the chance to meet Wood Phoebe. I told him that I'm a, I'm a music producer, I'm a vocalist, and there are some songs that I've produced. He listened to them and I told him, I would like to work with you under Barikiwa Studio. He told me, just give me your contact, you to take my number, we'll communicate. I remember the following day I tried calling him and I think due to the concert, he was tired, maybe he was still asleep during the day, he happened to call me the following day. And he asked me, which are some of the software you're well conversant with? when it comes to the field of audio production. I told him that I, I, I use, uh, I named some of the softwares that I'm using. And uh, he called me to Nairobi, I went to Nairobi. I visited Barikiwa studio, I was well oriented. Like uh, he took me through the orientation and uh, he told me to come back on, 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 a, on a Monday. So, on a Monday, he told me to carry all my belongings. So I went to Barikiwa studio. By then, Barikiwa was at uh, Greenspan Estate. So I went there. We started working. I was given an interview. By the way, the interview was very much practical. I did a song. I recorded them a song, which he did a collab with this guy, a popularly comedian known as Ogaobina. And uh, the song is... Uh, uh, the song is I go give them to you so after that I started working under Barikiwa as a producer and I recorded so many artists Tony Ndema, Kevo Makawile can't name all of them so while there is a, a day Wood Phoebe had a, a concert in the US and it was going to the US so I was the one who was left in the studio I and a certain guy known as Mato, Mato Wunyaseme, who was the manager of Barikiwa. So I, I, I used to ask myself, why is it that Barikiwa studio is only recording Ohangla and gospel? I know very well I can do gospel because my, my background and how I was raised, I was raised in, uh, in, 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 you know, in, in a church, you know, I was a church boy. And uh, my background also, I was raised a God-fearing guy. I know very well that with gospel, I can do gospel well. Why can't I try Ohangla? Then I tried Ohangla. I tried Ohangla and I did my first song, Mama Cindy. When I did Mama Cindy, Wood Phoebe came back from the US and he listened to that song. Then he was like, whose song is that? It's so nice. Then I told him, that's my song. Then he was like, my friend, you're sitting on money. Uh, you've got a real talent. You can do it. Why can't you just produce uh, so many songs and, you know, you release them so that you can start your band and also do well like other people are doing. And, I, and we had a small, a small meeting during the night and he asked me, between production and, and live performance, which one do you want? And I told him, uh, I think I need to do the band. I need to do the live performance. Then he asked me, I want you to do a song for my wife, Nikita. I did a Nikita Love. I did the song. We released the song. When we released the song, the song really hit the airwaves. It was a hit, of course. So people were very much curious. We want to know who is this Javan Makajudo? Like, where does he perform? How many songs does this guy have? Like, you know. So I had to record so many music, a lot of music. So we came to Kisomo, uh, Barikiwa Studio relocated from Nairobi to Kisomo. I came to Kisomo where I, 
I continued to record my album. I did Officer Won Kondo, I did Tamambaya, I did Jakinda, I did Slim Yarawendo, JM Enga, among others. Then um, we launched my band in the year 2018 at Ufafa Makuti. Then from there I started performing. So I started music or I ventured into music because I personally, I can say I personally am music. The good definition of Javan is I am the music. So I ventured into music because it is something I love, something I was born with. It is something I love doing. Yeah, so that's all about my music journey. Uh, right now, uh, I've released like around uh, serious music. I've uh, released like around 32 songs. And um, my, my, my first album was Slim Nyarawendo. And that album, I think it had uh, around, it had around eight songs. It had eight songs in total. But after that, I, 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 I dropped some single tracks. So I can say that the most interesting album that I'm having right now as Javan is my second album, which is not yet released. Uh, and the album's title is Chunyuendo. Nyati ni Chunyuendo Chunchimo Gimamit Mobo Aerosana. I really love that album because the energy in that album, the energy that I, like the energy I had when I was composing that album, the voice in that album, the production quality in that album. The video production quality in that album and the creativity in that album is just of another level compared to all the tracks I've been doing before. So my Chunyuendo album is yet to be released, of which I'll communicate the date, when will I release this song, with this album, where, and time. So just keep it Keep it like keep keep on following Japan Makajudo for more updates. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. First, I want to start by saying this. There is this one phrase in law that I really love. Dalaka dalani ginduru. Kila boma kuna kile. And um, me, I want to say that in my in, in, in this journey and uh, in this music industry, there are a lot of challenges. So I want to talk about I myself, the challenges that I've been facing in this music industry. Number one challenge that I've been facing in this music industry, one is uh, there is this issue that uh, I can say that uh, number one lack of good promoters and uh, people who can support your talent you know because I just came to realize that I personally I just came to conclude that by the time you're struggling in this music industry no one is there to discover you but by the time at least you are coming up good then you'll find that people really want to associate with you so that is challenge number one challenge number two is uh, you performing at times and uh, you get some critics from friends and fans there are a lot of critics into this and another thing is that some people really want to use you since you are young, some people are just exploiters. They just want to come and exploit your talent, you know. Once they've achieved whatever they want from you, then, you know, they go their way. So I personally, when it comes to this exploitation, the way I handle this exploitation, I personally as Javan, I came to realize or I came to learn my worth. 
as an artist. And I can say that as an artist, you have to know your worth. Once you know your worth, then you'll know how to handle this issue of exploitation. Because someone can call you to a show, like there was, there was, I once went to Nairobi for a certain show, but when I reached there, I performed, the club was full, that person was collecting the gate, and the show was good, we can't deny. When I finished this, the, the, the show, I called, uh, I called my, my guy, the person who was helping in management, and I told him, now look for this guy, so that to Funga Biashara we go home. This guy, <laughs> this guy told us that he's taking his girlfriend to the house. We waited, we waited, said we waited till morning until the lady who was at the counter asked me what is the way forward you guys i want just to risk for you guys i just take my money to come and take out share i give you so i said that if anyone wants me for any contract i as javan then i really like a written agreement i love paperwork to avoid this exploitation because if we do good paperwork then you want you know you want to, to, to like to deny everything then i can find a way of pinning you down and uh, i have justice as an artist another thing yeah in, in 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 music industry there is this competition unhealthy competition in music industry unhealthy unhealthy competition to an extent that your fellow artist they now want to like battle with you physically, a physical fight now, you know, a physical fight. So me, I always say that when it comes to that unhealthy competition, I said, I as Javan, I gave myself some rules. One, I don't want to do my music as I run after fame. I want to do my music to educate, to unite and to bring happiness in the society. So, I always say one thing. Doing it my own way. I do it my own way. So, when I do it my own way, then I don't think if I'll come across any battle with, any, with anybody. Uh, just if, not unless I want to do it, to outdo or to outshine yeah, someone, then now we'll have to involve ourselves into some unhealthy competition. And that's not good. Another challenge I'm facing in music industry is uh, this issue of management. Uh, to be honest, in the industry of a handler, these managers, these people we call managers, a few are learned. That is the honest truth. A few have gone to school. The rest are school dropouts who are just well connected because they started doing Angla business with some other art, a big artists who are shining some days back. And uh, when it comes to <laughs> this knowledge, you know, they, do, they don't have the knowledge. They don't have the knowledge. Like there was a time I was having a concert at Bombers of Kenya. And um, I asked my manager to go sell that deal on my behalf. Since this guy doesn't have that knowledge, he could not do that business. I had to involve another manager of another artist. who I'm not going to mention his name. But I had another manager, Jalini Saidia, into that. So get or oh, finding finding a well-learned manager who can manage you well in this Hangla industry is not easy. Not easy. So so far I can say those are some of the challenges I personally am facing in the music industry. But I thank God that I've got solution to all of them. I know how to do them my way and at the end of the day, I overcome. I overcome them. 
ya. Uh, hey, do I really have beef with any artist? Do I really have? Mm, I don't have beef with any artist actually, because one, me, if I meet artist, I don't talk to them as an artist. I talk to them as a music producer, as a sound engineer. Uh, so if we meet, we don't talk about, like we don't talk much, like I talk as an artist. So me, I don't have beef with any artist, not unless uh, there are some artists who are having beef with me. But with me, I can say my heart is pure. I don't have any beef with any, any artist in the industry. Yeah. Yeah, I'm really mentoring a lot of people, so many people. And uh, some of them are not into Ohangla industry, Ohangla fraternity. Some are doing genge, some are doing bongo, some are doing reggae, some are doing kapuka, different genres of music. But I really have so many people who are who I even signed under my label, Melo Music Empire. So I really have so many people I'm mentoring. Yeah, there are so many. There are like around around 23, about 23 people I'm mentoring right now as you speak. Yeah. An advice to upcoming artists. Um, I just want to tell you that in this game, if you want to start it, just want to wish you all the best. And uh, I want to tell you this. If you want to start or if you want to venture into music, first of all, be ready for one thing. Number one, you must be so I think you need to uh, you need to enhance your your shock your shock absorbers your stress shock absorbers you know nasema kangumu lazimu kae ngumu for you to do music lazimu kae ngumu because there are a lot of things that may may really uh, may really like make you feel less than a person when you Get, get into music some people will make you feel less than a person some people will really critics are so many it's too much so all you need to do number one you have to know what you want why do you want to do music there's some questions you have to answer ask yourself and answer them why do you want to be an artist why do you want to be an, a musician what do you need in music what is what is your time span in the music industry? What do you want to achieve? Those are some of the things that you need to ask yourself and make sure that you as a person, you answer yourself. Get ready for critics. Get ready for neglections and rejections. Uh, those are part of the game. Scandals, those are... Uh, so, so those I can say those are daily meals of 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 of, of music. Or once you become a, a public figure, those are daily meals. So you have to pray God, ask Him for wisdom to help you overcome all those. But I wish you all the best. Yeah. If you want to find Javan Makajudo, uh, if you want to find Javan Makajudo, you can follow me on Instagram at Javan Makajudo. You can follow me on Twitter at Javan Makajudo. You can follow me on Facebook, Javan Makajudo. Um, and all those platforms that I've just mentioned, uh, you can find my contacts there. You can find my contacts there. So you'll get my direct number you'll get my whatsapp number you can talk uh, yeah, that, that's it yeah. yes now 
this is now the climax of this conversation. I have a very, very, very big project. I tell you, my people, this is a bombshell. This one is going to blow minds. Uh, I have this project. I just, I just mentioned it uh, like earlier. I have this big album I'm working on. Truly, I want to tell you. Just to watch out. This project is big. And the Chunyu Endo track, I'm soon releasing it so that you can you can just have a taste of the whole album. That is just going to be one of the tracks. It is one among the songs in that album. So to all my fans, what I can tell you, I can advise you to do this. Please, I just want to advise you. Rush to my YouTube channel. Just get there. Subscribe to my YouTube channel at Engineer Javan Makachu. Subscribe. Ukifika pale YouTube, you'll get a teaser of that song. Of that song, Chunyu Edo Chunchiemo. You'll get a teaser. And I think from there, you can just know. You can just know. You know. Panapo, panapo moshi, pakosi moto. <laughs> so, nadali ya mvua pia ni mawingu. So, ile mvua itawanyeshea hapa, muanze kuzoya mawingu na hiyo chunyu endo. But you have to know that me, I love you all. And me, I love it when I'm corrected. It is true rebuke that we get to be good people. So, don't feel, mm, don't, 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 don't. Don't be afraid or don't feel afraid to tell me something. Just tell me. So long as you tell me the, in, in a good way. But don't go on, on Facebook like, you know, want to rebuke me on Facebook. That, my friend, with that now you are not rebuking me. With that now you're trying to insult me. And um, I love rebukes. I love everybody. I love my haters. I love my lovers. And you know, that's life. Cheers. <laughs>